Hi, my name's Ronan and... Oh, hello, and I'm Alex. And you join us here at Abu Dhabi's new terminal. And join us here at the check-in area at Abu Dhabi, uh, just next to guest services with the business class check-in on the right and priority check-in there straight ahead of us. Uh, here is just a quick tour of the business class check-in area. There were uh, a few bottles of water there, as you can see on the right, as well as um, some scented or infused uh, juices available um, if you are waiting for, uh, well, if you're waiting to go through through to uh, to departures. And here I am, just loading uh, up on the private security channel for those travelling in business or first class. There was also a private immigration queue, which took hardly any time. And here we are in duty free. As expected for Middle Eastern Airport, the duty free was vast, but what was even more vast was just the terminal space. Total open airiness gives you a vibe of being in sort of a, a, a posh shopping centre. Sadly, lots of the carpets had marks already on it, even though it had only been open for a few days. Plenty of garden and greenery around, which was quite nice, and it sort of adds that vibrancy to the space across the terminal. Just adding to what Roland mentioned about the shops i mean there's lots of them it definitely did feel like we were in some sort of big shopping mall or shopping center depending away from um we did get the sense though that the terminal wasn't quite ready there were a lot of people walking around in high visors uh, in the toilets the soap dispensers next to the taps weren't functional so they for some reason installed an additional soap dispenser which all seemed a bit odd um, there were some toilets that were closed um carpet that was already marked um so uh it kind of felt like it wasn't perhaps ready yet. Um, it felt like it was a bit rushed. There's a, some um, bits of kind of general cleanliness as well um, on panels and stuff that we thought could have been a bit cleaner, especially with this being you know, a brand new terminal that's just recently opened. And here we are arriving at the Etihad Business Class Lounge. On arrival, we were told to go up to the uh, sixth floor of the lounge. Um, not sure why, we arrived at the top. And let me just tell you though, it is a spectacular business class lounge in terms of looks. Uh, we headed uh, along the sixth floor just to see uh, what was there and what was about. All the furniture is brand new, although some of it is showing wear and tear. There we go on the right, you can see the smoking lounge, uh, which is really great for any of you as people that do smoke and do need to light up in a terminal. As you go down on the sixth floor, uh, you start heading along and there is a area with lots of tables and chairs, although we were unsure on what these were for, as there was actually no buffet area here, just a coffee machine and some really shameful snacks. One thing the lounge is great for is the views, and as you can see here, uh, Etihad A320, the A380 on the left that took us to London. So we thought we'd head down to the dining room. We got conflicting uh, information from various staff members in the lounge in terms of when the food was being served. One said it wasn't available, the next person said it was available, so we headed down there, but there wasn't any food um, available. Uh, they suggested half 11, so we waited around until then. Still food wasn't available. We heard a, overheard a conversation um, that food was available from 12, and definitely it was, and it was a really good spread of uh, bread, salads, uh, Middle Eastern cuisines, uh, curry, rice, and there's a dessert selection, which was absolutely amazing. So when the food was available, we were very impressed, but quite disappointed that there was an, a gap of about an hour or so where there wasn't really a substantial food offering apart from crisps and, a, and kind of stack bars, coffee, tea, water, etc. So here we are, just some selection of the food that was available. Lots of Middle Eastern and Asian cuisines. Uh, on offer with lots of uh, curries. They did have two pasta dishes though. But they, as you can see the plates here, they are left out on a cold base, uh, which sadly meant the hot food they did have on display, once you'd put it on the plate and got it to your table, it had cooled down and the heat had transferred onto the plate. So that was really disappointing for what should be a five star experience. And then we headed up to the sixth floor um, into a lounge area, which was actually really nice and calming. But once again, quite a budgetary selection on offer there was just crisps lotos biscoff biscuits um and water and juices that had clearly seen better days so it's still on the top floor here of the lounge and this is you can see the the bar there which is uh, really great and um, some more food uh, hot food areas there on the right again this is a massive lounge with lots of seats and in all honesty i'm not quite sure it will reach capacity anytime soon here's the uh, bathroom a pretty standard bathroom with uh two cubicles again i'm a bit probably concerned there that when the lounge is busy there won't be enough um stores available for uh, for people to use um here we are on the i think this is the fifth floor again there's three floors in total for the lounge so um yeah it, you can basically uh, get lost in it here we are at the uh, boarding gate it was all 
bit chaotic this part was in the sense of they had kind of ready for pre-boarding on screens but then they weren't ready and um, there was a lot of confusion amongst uh, various customers around whether they could board yet uh, but we were told to sit down and um, Raynan went through first when I went through uh, check-in there was some sort of paper jam so my boarding pass had to be reprinted for some reason but I wasn't informed why um, as I was walking down the jet bridge um, I, no- I noticed then that the seat had been changed and obviously that was quite cheek of them because Ronan and I had selected seats next to each other so um, yeah not not too pleased with uh, with them doing that and not informing me um, and here we are uh, on the jet bridge leading to the aircraft to take us back to London. So in summary uh, what did you think Alex? So in summary the new Abu Dhabi terminal I think is absolutely uh, stunning lots of shops available there um, and when they've probably fixed those small little uh, bits which aren't quite perfect I think it would be a really good terminal um, as for the Etihad business class lounge I think there's some improvement there to make sure that there's a substantial food offering available throughout and to improve the awareness in terms of um, of staff members in terms of when food's available and um, just to make sure the boarding process isn't as chaotic as it was. So Ronan um, how did you find it? So in summary I think the terminal is an absolute great terminal, although I think for how long they've had to build it, I think it was ready nearly 10 years ago. Um, it's wholeheartedly disappointing. I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. There's cracks on the floor. There's potholes as such of um, different panels on the flooring. There's lights not working overhead. Um, the lounge, in all honesty, I think it would be great if that was a Plaza Premium lounge. I think for a full service carrier, there's a lot of work still to be done. Remember, if you haven't already, click subscribe and click like on this video as there'll be a lot more videos coming soon on reviews of hotels, airlines, days out and more.